recorded messages and autographs all on sale at wizardworldvirtual.com. Those will be all week. So if you're just catching this on a replay, no worries. Know that you can always sign on there and find out what cool things we have coming up because we have some amazing stuff dropping soon. Literally coming this week, we've got Stargate, which is insane. Uh, we've got Dolph Lundgren, even more insane. I like all of this is next week. It's, it's going to be huge. Um, also, don't forget to check out some of the signed memorabilia and works of art from our favorite artists and vendors from previous virtual experiences and physical conventions, all at wizardworldvault.com. Now, ladies and gents, it's my pleasure to bring to this virtual stage Wuxia, the entertainment genre you already love but didn't know. You guys are about to get your heads blown. This is going to be so amazing. I can't wait for you guys to, to hear these like subject matter experts Break it down for why you know this genre, why you love this genre, and will continue to love it even more with the work that they're producing. Let's bring out here, first and foremost, CEO, founder of Immortal Studios. Let's hear it for Peter Zhao. Peter! Woohoo! What's going on? Hey, I love it. I love it. We're going to keep the Immortal Studios love going. We got associate editor and action director, Gene Shing, coming out. What's up, Gene? Uh, there, the almost there. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, next up, now she is an investor of Immortal Studios, which is absolutely the coolest thing ever, but is also like widely known martial arts film star, uh, star of the sequel to uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She was in uh, Wu, Wu Assassins, that's on Netflix. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Miss Juju Chan. Hello, hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, rounding out this uh, this panel here, uh, you might know him through YouTube. He's also a translator and an absolute fan of Chinese fantasy. Let's hear it for Jeremy Deathblade. Bye. Hello. Yo. Hi. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. Oh, my goodness. The pleasure is truly, truly mine. Um, I'm so happy to kick it with you guys. Um, we're going to jump right into this, right? Okay, so the genre that has brought us all together is wuxia, right? Now, this sounds like it's, it's, it sounds so comforting just to say it, but what is wuxia? Peter, break it down for me, please. So I think one way of saying it is that wuxia is, is like the spirit and soul of Eastern culture. Mm -hmm. It's really, it was born out of a time when people were oppressed, people were taken advantage of, and then the heroes emerged who provided safety, hope, and transcendence. So wuxia literally means the martial hero. It started off in real life where people who practice Eastern martial arts became incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. Some even became enlightened. When they saw bad stuff go down, they would step up and do something about it. So it started in like real live events and stories and it became legends. Legends became folklore. And when it came modern time, it became, became the stuff of stories. So a lot of writers are about, write about wuxia heroes. And then the, 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 the books became TV shows, they became movies. In the past several decades, they became games. But there's this really thousands of year lineage and it's been the defining element of Eastern entertainment. Of course, we know the movies that have been associated with, but it's a, it's a tradition that we're really ascribing to and we're committed to rebooting for the 21st century. So that's a very, very brief synopsis on wuxia, but it's more than a genre. For us, it's a way of life. It's an right. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Now, when you talk about rebooting it, uh, let's talk about Immortal Studios for a hot second. How exactly is Immortal Studios bringing wuxia into the 21st century? Well, first of all, when you watch wuxia movies, it's very easy to think that this stuff just happened from thousands of years ago. It's stuff that doesn't have anything, anything to do with real life. Mm -hmm. So the stories that we're telling has a completely modern backdrop. It's the world that we live in today. So we're making that relevant and interesting. Um, another thing that we're doing, because wuxia is a late, this became about senseless fighting. Mm. It's no longer about the right fight. So we're bringing that virtue, we're bringing that transcendence back to it. Um, and we're also bringing wuxia back to the transformational origins of martial arts. So it's kind of like the ancient and the future and the present moment meeting together. So, you know, this is just one of the that. things that we're doing. 
I love that. Okay, so for everyone else, I want to get kind of a feel for what was your entrance to wuxia as a culture, as an art form? Juju, can we start with you? Mm-hmm. Um, well, to me, uh, well, I, I started watching wuxia films when I was a kid in Hong Kong. There are a lot of wuxia films, and it just inspired me a lot um, in learning martial arts and being so cool, you know, how they have all these... Um, different uh, superhuman abilities when you're right. watching uh, wuxia films. People can fly in the air, um, all those famous bamboo forest chasing scenes. And of course, my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies, Crouching Di- Hi- Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yes. Um, and <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, and every time when I watch uh, wuxia films, mm-hmm. they're all so visually stunning. Yes. Um, no matter it's like uh, uh, cinematography, mm-hmm. the fight scenes, the uh, the costume, everything. To me, it's it's very different. You, there is no other genre similar to. to it's really unique. So, um, so when I was a little girl, I, I besides watching, um, you know. Bruce Lee's Jackie Chan. I love watching all the wuxia films and copying their wuxia move, trying to fly in a house. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Jerry, what about you, man? How did you get involved with the wuxia genre? There's a dual answer to the question. Um, I'll give you the 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 first wuxia movie that I ever saw, and I'm by wuxia in this. What I mean is like the costume type where they're flying around and stuff, as opposed to more like uh, traditional action movies. And that movie was uh, Magnificent Bodyguards. It's a Jackie Chan movie from 1978 that is really wild. That's and awesome. that was back when I was just obsessed with Jackie Chan. And it's, that movie is very different, generally speaking, from most of his other movies. So I, when I saw that, I, I was like, what is going on here? It has Star Wars music in it. Like they're jumping off of cliffs with, uh, you know, they're running the film backward and stuff. So I kind of was confused by it, uh, to be honest. Uh, but then Crouching Tiger... Hidden Dragon came along. I was basically the movie that started it all for me. It was, I found it super interesting and it led me down the path of uh, reading as many translations as I could possibly find online because I, I at that time, I didn't know a thing about uh, the Chinese language. And then years later, it also kind of drove me into actually starting to study Mandarin. And then I moved to China and then I eventually started translating this stuff uh, for a living. Uh, and it basically all goes back to Crouching Tiger. That was definitely a really big thing in my life. And I think for a lot of uh, Westerners who weren't familiar with that stuff, it really presented it in a very just amazing way that kind of sucked everybody in and got everybody interested in it. It's so true, so true. It was it was so authentic and honest, um, both in the presentation and the beauty. It was, it was absolutely amazing. I, I love it, I love it. Uh, Gene, what about you? What was your first entrance into the genre that is wuxia? I was the midnight movies and going up to Chinatown, San Francisco. Uh, I was studying Kung Fu and me and my Kung Fu brothers would make weekly trips up to uh, the, the, the Great Star Theater just to see what the latest <laughs> conflict was. And this was all the kind of classic uh, uh, Shaw Brothers and Golden Harvest stuff. So, I mean, I remember uh, like the Incredible Shattering Sword and Avenging Eagle, some of these really early ones that were just uh, just mind blowing to me. And, you know, I mean, being Asian American, there really weren't a lot of Asians in media, you know, Mr. Sulu. Right. About it. And so it was just kaiju, kung fu movies, you know, and so uh, that really, uh, they were my role models in in many ways, you know, and I just loved sort of the the funky reverence they had about trying to achieve their storytelling, you know, and I mean, the the effects were cheesy and, but um, being a kung fu practitioner, you know, the Kung Fu was was superb. I love that. That's awesome. And obviously, we've spoken highly of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And, and Juju, you were a part of the sequel. How did it feel to be a part of this, this IP, this, this movie franchise that people fell so in love with to get an opportunity to be a part of that? What was that like? Um, wow, well, it's a great honor to be in that film and being able to work with, you know, Master Yu Mo Peng. He, he mm-hmm. does a lot, he did a lot of uh, wu, uh, wuxia films as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so working with all the legends on the film, uh, it's it's amazing. And I learned a lot. Um, it's, 
it was my one of my first uh, feature film that I did, and did, uh, I was very happy with my role playing Silver Dot She. First time really dressed up in a wuxia cost, you know, right. cost, doing wire works, um, flying in the mid yeah, mid air, and it was so cool. And and this whole because I I played. Um, you know, one of the warriors along with Donnie Yen's character. So this mm -hmm. brotherhood, I, although I'm a girl, I'm into this, you know, sort of like a brotherhood thing. Uh, 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 you know, honor, you, you fight for honor. That's really like a theme for uh, a lot of our films. So it, it's great being part of it. And I would love to do more. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I got to give a shout out to all the people that are watching right now. Uh, we literally have folks from Ottawa, from New Jersey, Massachusetts, Oregon, Boston, the Ukraine, uh, people in California. It's We've got people all over the place. Um, and I think this is a perfect opportunity to really kind of illustrate how, uh, as the title says, we already love Wuxia. We just don't know it. So what are some of the places that we've seen Wuxia entertainment but did not know that that's what it was? Obviously, Crouching Tiger, you've given that one. So that's a clear, definitive, like, oh, that is Wuxia, okay. But there are other places that we've seen it that we didn't recognize. And I want to know what you guys, what do you guys qualify or classify as Wuxia, but you didn't know it? I would say The Matrix. Okay, okay. I think the Matrix has all the classic ingredients of Wuxia. There's becoming the hero. So, the, so Neo goes on a journey of self-discovery. He, um, he goes through a spiritual transformation and discovers mm -hmm. his inner power and skill. He has a master, a Mor Morpheus, and he mm -hmm. has a big baddie that he has to defeat. That's and, true. That's true. It's a classic. It's a classic Wuxia structure. Not to mention, um, including all the classic fighting, um, very very clearly Eastern East Asian martial arts that was of course. included. So I would say Wuxia, hands down, is a is a classic. Um, Wuxia film. The and that was, that was choreographed by um, Yung Ping, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's... The people assisting Keanu, they all came from Hong Kong cinema. Yep. So, so it's got all of the elements. So I would say The Matrix, hands down. Okay, yeah. okay. Are there any I would, others? I would say that... Um, now, I'm going to qualify this yeah. uh, in a second, but Star Wars is definitely something that has a lot of Wuxia elements. I have a video on my YouTube channel talking about Star Wars and Wuxia, and I don't, I'm not trying to say that Star Wars is Wuxia, because it's not, right, right. but it does have a lot of elements, depending, obviously, on which which movies you're talking about. Right. Um, I remember seeing, I was I was at San Diego Comic-Con in the early 2000s, I think, and I was uh, at the Kung Fu Clip Marathon, um, and I remember seeing a clip from a kind of obscure uh, Wuxia movie that I was told, I, I can't verify this, but I was told that, that Lucas actually pointed to this fight scene and said, I want to I want to have this fight scene for the Duel of the Fates um, wow. battle. With Jenna. Go to my YouTube channel and look for the Star Wars video. I have it in there and I have it next to each other, the Star Wars and the uh, Wuxia movie. And it's like beat for beat almost. So there's it's a complicated topic, um, but there are definitely a lot of Wuxia elements, whether it's the fighting or whether it's other parts like the master apprentice relationship or the kind of underworld elements. There's just so much stuff that if you are a Star Wars fan, you'll definitely uh, recognize a lot of the stuff that we all know and love from Wuxia. I love that. I love that. Now, I mean, it it, it goes to say, like, obviously, you've named some. Uh, fairly serious movies. Does it does it cross over into other genres? Can you have you know romantic comedies or comedies uh, have wuxia elements? You know, I just saw this uh, romantic comedy from Korea called My Mighty Princess. You can get it on Amazon Prime. Yeah, and it's a goofy rom com, but it's total wuxia. I mean, they even say awesome. the part of the Wu Lin and stuff. I mean, it's this girl has this amazing kung fu powers. And she's kind of the outsider and she's trying to romance this uh hockey player but it's like it's it's it is spread to so many other genres you know i think it's kind of tricky because you know you take for example like the, the samurai genre you know mm -hmm. like, i think of of of, of chanbara the samurai films you know that star wars have kind of a deeper connection to that um and i would make that a distinction between that and wuxia you know wuxia has more of a chinese root um, although there can be crossovers when you have like, like uh, the blind swordsman versus the one-armed swordsman. Right. So it, it, 
it blends with other genres very nicely and very elegantly. And it's, it's a very gray zone, you know? I mean, you, you take, for example, Matrix. I mean, Matrix, at a one point, Neo says, you know, I know Kung Fu. Right. <laughs> in connection. Um, whereas other films like, like say, uh, Wolf Warrior, um, which stars Wu Jing, which is one of our, one of our great uh, Wushu champions who became a mega star. I wouldn't really call uh, Wolf Warrior a Wuxia film. You know, it's a, it's a military film. You know, it doesn't really have that that connection to to Wu De, to the ethics of the, the that world so well. You know, so it's very gray. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. I mean, nuance is everything. So that does make sense. What were you going to say, Jeremy? I said one more thing I'm going to throw in there, which is spaghetti westerns. I mean, mm. there are, now people might be like, what? How could a western be like a wish film? And it's not the fight scenes, but right. if you watch things like uh, Man with No, or so he's, it's My Name is Nobody, I think, um, mm -hmm. Once Upon a Time in the West, the, the original Django movie, mm -hmm. or even the Man with No Name trilogy or whatever, they are, there's no swords, they're not flying around. But in terms of like the drama, the tension, the uh, like the themes of like brotherhood or whatever, all the all the all the lone wandering hero kind of thing. Some of those movies, those spaghetti western movies, to me are so wusha that if you took the plot and basically applied that plot to some people with the right clothing, with swords, and doing some kung fu and flying around, it would perfectly correlate. So if you're a, a Clint Eastwood fan of those old movies, um, check out some, especially the Shaw Brothers as well. I, I'm also a huge fan of those, and some of them. To me, I, I'm actually curious how much influence went which way, because I know that the writer Gu Long had a lot of influence from um, uh, foreign media in terms of movies and other books. I'm curious about it. I don't really know, but I definitely have seen a lot of crossover. For instance, in the movie Magic Blade, there is right. some, the, the character, the main character of Magic Blade has basically a poncho like the Clint Eastwood character, and That's he amazing. has a sword strapped to his side and he kind of like flips it around and stuff. So there's definitely a lot of crossover there. Oh my God, that's amazing. And, and honestly, I think Kill Bill uh, really showcases the, the correlation between the two. If you look at volume one and volume two, they're very similar in their story because that's the, the context that was being shown. Uh, uh, Chad Garrity from Ottawa, Canada wants to know, would John Wick series be considered wuxia at all? I would say a version of it. Okay. Because uh, wuxia, I think, comes in so many different sizes and colors. Right. My 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 sense is that wuxia is actually a big tent. It's a really, really big tent with many, many different influences from fighting styles, from realism, and from a practitioner or from a fantasy point of view, how well, how prominent is chi? How mm -hmm. prominent are supernatural elements? So it's actually mm -hmm. a big tent. So within that big tent, I would say John Wick is within the more realism school. I got you. Got you. Branch of Wuxia. Yeah. Would you would you say that uh, properties like Kung Fu Panda and even Power Rangers uh, exhibit aspects of Wuxia that kids can recognize and see at an at an early stage? Absolutely. If you look at the engines, first of all, I think Wuxia is almost from a from a genre or story point of view, it's kind of an engine. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of universal and global. But where it comes into the language of um, action and the poetry of action and the style of action, the pursuit of this kind of physical excellence that goes beyond normal, this is where I think a lot of the Wuxia elements come over. I would even, I would venture to say that American cinema, Hollywood films, was transformed somewhere in the early 2000s. After yeah, Crouching right. Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Hollywood movies took a completely drastic difference. Just go look at um, Charlie's Angels. Right. Go look at the three musketeers that emerged after Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon and The Matrix. Everybody has been doing wuxia, has that kind of stylized fighting ever since. That's so true. Oh my God, that's so true. Uh, borrow none, borrow right. none. Right. Just go study the differences. So I think I would say Wuxia is now the official engine, but now I think the opportunity is to bring the whole thing over in its authentic form, you know, not a bastardized or stolen right. version. Let's bring the whole thing over. Just actually do it. Like if you're gonna do it, do it. I love that. Spot on. Let's not steal it. Let's not. I think there's a new term out there. It's called genre appropriation. There you what go. More genre appropriation. There you go. Represent. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so in that same vein, actually, I want to ask this question, and Juju and Jean, I know you guys can throw in on this one. Um, how does the wuxia philosophy, or what does it mean to a martial artist? 
what is it that Wuxia does to speak to um, the, the growth of a martial artist? Um, to me, well, the entire theme of constantly improving oneself, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's um, something that's influenced me to strive to become a better martial artist. Um, and the stories tells us how it's not easy but it's important to strive for improvement constantly, to strive to be better both in skills and in a person. So that philosophy definitely helped me to become a better uh, person that I am right now and in terms of my skills. I love that, I love that. Jean? Yeah, I mean, I think the key with Wuxia is, um, you know, with, with the Chinese martial arts, because it's so, uh, there's so many different versions and so many different styles and so clan-based, uh, that we don't really have uh, an established code of eth ethics that everybody follows. Mm -hmm. There are separate codes within different clans, right, with different families, different villages, different lineages. Um, but Wu Xia describes that ethical basis. You know, that's Wu Da. That's what we call, you know, literally the, the martial ethics. And so the way, you know, it's not like it's written like the Ten Commandments. Um, instead, uh, our ethical code is transmitted through these stories. And these stories go back go really far back. You, know, you get to these 12th century novels and classics that, that first start building the genre, you know, the foundation blocks, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Outlaws of the Marsh, even Journey to the West. The, these are, 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 are these chapter stories, uh, apart from their adventures, always had these sort of moral lessons. And um, uh, the, the genre of Wuxia goes to, to sort of include that. I think also as a martial artist, one of the things that Wuxia does, um, there's sort of a distinction, there's sort of a Wuxia world. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's a community that we call the Wu Lin or the Jianghu, which are like the, this sort of a, a part, this outside community uh, of, of heroes and villains that manipulate the world and, and, and travel through the world. And um, so that, that as a martial artist, you kind of become that too, you know, you're, you're of course. In a way, you know, in that, that, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure Juju and, and even Peter can do this where, you know, you, you meet another martial artist and you can tell right away, you know, you can get that sense. Be, the way they be careful when you shake somebody's hand because you're being sized up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. truth is out there. I get it. I, I love having these conversations with Gene um, is because my theory is that this actually exists there is a Wulin martial world out there. The beauty of Wuxia, which I really, really love, is that these, these mythological figures, these people, it is an unbroken lineage. Mm -hmm. I talk about this a lot, that having meet these masters atop ancient mountains, you know, writing calligraphy and poetry, getting drunk and then practicing like the most amazing martial arts you would ever seen and hearing their clothes like go swish when they move, is that some of this stuff it's very, very stylized, but there is there's an authenticity and a realness there. And it actually exists. It does exist. That's amazing. I so, love it. Very built into the book. So take, for example, right. you know, uh, or the movies or everything. Take, for example, uh, uh, Five Deadly Venoms. Mm -hmm. right? There's one character, Toad, right, who has the iron skin. And a lot of right. people are like, does that make any sense, right? What, well, actually, there's a book called The uh, 72 Consummate Shaolin Art Techniques. It's a very classic uh, martial arts training, uh, where there's all these different sort of hardening skills and light chi going. A lot of it's kind of fantastic, kind of mythical. But in that, there's a toad skin skill. Wow. And it's the darn body thing. And actually, some of the other characters, like centipede, you know, being able to crawl and, 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 and the, the lizard, those are those come straight out of that book. And so, and even though that book, there are, some of the training techniques are fantastical. Um, it's still they're, rooted, though. Yeah, so they're rooted. Yeah. So the, the line between what is fiction and what is fact gets really blurry sometimes, especially like when Peter says, you see one of these great masters do something that's just uh, ridiculous. You're like, you're like did that really happen? <laughs> like really yeah. like a double take. But I think that's why this genre is so amazing, because it really speaks to our desire to be a better version of ourselves. Yes. And these, they, these masters, they tap into this, immense potential we feel with inside. And that's why I think Wuxia is an amazing thing to lean into this moment because we all want to be a better version of ourselves. And this genre, this storytelling, this tradition says that you can. You can if you work it. 
I'm so you that. don't have to be bitten by a radioactive spider. You don't have to be a <laughs> millionaire playboy. It works if you work it. And you that's, just do think, it. That's like the beauty of the of this genre because it speaks to that yearning for uh, that we have we all have inside. I love that. Peter, you got a shout out. Uh, Kevin Foster uh, is giving you a shout out from his place in Sequoia National Park. Uh, said you're looking good. Says you're looking good. Um, okay, so going back through some of these other... Uh, I got I to gotta give a shout out back to him because this yeah. is a man. He is a shah. He is a... This guy rode the Great Wall on his bike. Wow. Back in the 80s. Oh, that's awesome. As an American... Um, going to China as Captain America, riding the bike. That, so that's an act of heroism. So that is, that right, is right back at you, Kevin. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, okay, so we've got a couple of different shout outs from different movies uh, that people have watched. Uh, Mike Baker uh, from Boston said that his favorite movie was uh, Burning of the Red Lotus Monastery. Um, have you guys seen that? Okay, so lots of head nods on that one. Um, and he also asked, Juju, how did it feel uh, to go from watching Wuxia movies as a child to starring in Wuxia films? Is that like a full circle kind of piece for you? Uh, really, when I was a kid, I would dream to, oh, if I can do that, if I can be her or be this person, it would be wonderful, it would be so fun, so cool. I, but I really didn't know how to become an actress. I didn't really have a, pa like, guidance of how I just right. really, really lucky to be able to somehow <laughs> become an actress now and being able to do all the things that I dreamt about doing when I was a kid so yeah it's it's um, I'm very lucky Juju, awesome. who do you look up to like when you think about like martial heroines like we're big about Shaunui like the martial heroine like who do you look up to when you think like who's your Obviously, um, you're one. You are one yourself. But of course, I was going to say. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there's so many, so many very good martial artists and actors that I look up to. Um, I mean, definitely Bruce Lee is my icon, and and Jackie Chan and uh, Michelle Yao in the wuxia genre because she does she she did a lot of wuxia films as well, and Jet Li and um, Donnie Yen as well. Um, I think I have a lot to learn from each of them. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> um, okay, so this is kind of a, a alley-oop question. Uh, Damien Buer, uh, who's a buddy of mine, uh, asked, what are your dream projects you would love to make? And I think this is a perfect alley-oop to talk about more of what Immortal Studios is going to be doing uh, uh, coming soon. So who wants to jump in on that one? Okay, I'll jump in. One of the okay, there we go. I think um, has been horribly sort of misrepresented in martial arts films in general is that lack of authenticity. And so, for example, you know, the Wang Fei Hong genre was a huge, it's over a hundred Wang Fei Hong movies. And he's almost never doing Hong Ga, which was his style. That's the style that he's most famous for. He's right. usually Chu or doing some other thing. Um, Jackie had him doing drunken style, you know? And so I'd, I'd like to see that because there's these traditions of martial arts that are very valid and extant, I'd like to see that bleed over. That's something we're really trying to do with uh, with the adept and uh, and all of these these properties is in, interject authentic techniques. I mean, when it comes to to Shaolin, for example, my lineage, there is a body of uh, core uh, traditional Shaolin forms. Mm -hmm. so we try to integrate those moves into the choreography of what we're doing, and that spreads to all the you know as we move into swordsman stories and Dongshan. You know, Wudong, Wu Tang, Wu Tang Clan. As we, yes. that, that, as we move into that group, we want to use and represent authentic Wudong moves, you know, and, and really kind of not only just have the martial arts as being, I mean, most of the martial arts now in films are, are modern Wushu, you know, I mean, even, even you know, Donnie Yen's latest uh, Ip Man one, mm -hmm. uh, does a, Ip Man was a Wing Chun guy, but he, you know, for the movies, he's got to do Wushu, and Donnie Yen's a Wushu guy. Right. Uh, I mean, one of the things I got to give props with Donnie Yen is he changes his style in every film. You know, he looks very different. At Jackie, he does great stuff, but it's all you always see a Jackie Chan fight. Right. He's crazy acrobatics. Donnie's going to look different in every film. You know, and he, he just really does a lot to, to make his characters look like they're doing the style they're representing. I love so that. In that spirit, we want to do very much the same thing uh, with all of our properties. Um, I just want to be authentic. Of course. That That's. You know, it's, it's, it, and if we're going to preserve the story, let's preserve the meat and the heart of it too. There you go. There you so go. look, I, I have to jump in on that. 
question because I, you know, because I was born into Wuxia, mm-hmm. um, by virtue of my father Xiao Yi, who is one who's considered one of the legendary uh, creators in the genre. In fact, right behind me are half of the wall are all of his books. So when you when 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 this person asks like, what are your favorites? Well. I love them so much that I created Immortal Studios as an homage to the entire genre. So uh, we have many, many loves and we've created an interconnected universe, kind of like Marvel style, but I would say because this predates Marvel, we're not like trying to imitate Marvel, but it's mm-hmm. creating a big tent for all of these stories to exist together in an interconnected way. So there isn't one that I super love. I have a personal one that I love. It's called the Chronicles of the Immortal Swordsman, which is going to be a uh, upcoming title in, in March, we'll be announcing then. We're talking about it for the first time here. Um, so we love them all. We love the genre so much that we created a world of them. So mm-hmm. if we had our say, we would be in production over the next hundred years and not stop. I love that. I love that. Now, I'm going to switch gears just a little bit, uh, Jeremy, because we we haven't heard from you in a second. So when it comes to Wuxia stories, and that's something that you kind of fell in love with specifically, um, what makes a good Wuxia story to you? What What is it uh, that really kind of resonates in your readership to a Wuxia story? Well, for me personally, I really um, find myself drawn toward the sort of outcast type characters that you often find in Wuxia. They're usually the, the characters aren't part of the system. They're not part of the mm-hmm. government. They don't work for the police. I mean, occasionally they do, but there's often these wandering heroes that exist in their own world. They have their own friendships and that really always gets to me. And there's also um, something that I I did a video about this on my channel where there's this thing about sworn brotherhood, whether it's Mm -hmm. outright actual swearing or kowtowing or whatever, or whether it kind of happens naturally. And that's another thing that always gets at me. Uh, So for instance, in the Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon 2 that Juju is in, basically her character is introduced in this like tavern setting and there's a couple other people that are, are introduced as being like just wandering martial artists. And they kind of, without any, you know, without knowing each other or talking about it, they all just kind of jump into this fight scene and then they're friends. And that kind of thing happens in Wuxia all the time where people will meet, they don't know anything about each other. And they're like, you know what, let's be brothers. And then they, <laughs> they'll live and die for each other, that kind of thing. So those, those types of scenarios always kind of tug at my heartstrings. And over the years, while the cool fighting and special effects or wire work or whatever it is, that stuff I really like. But over the years, as I've been getting older, I've found myself a lot more drawn to the stories and the characters uh, in mm-hmm. the movies. So, you know, in the old Child Brothers movies, they didn't have all the special effects they do nowadays. But for some reason, a lot of times those movies, to me, come across as being more compelling than the, the CGI stuff. Uh, so anyway, I think that that's the stuff, whether it's the novels or the books that is kind of transcends time. I think that's kind of what Peter is is getting at. Um, it it doesn't have to set take place necessarily in ancient China. It doesn't have to um, have people flying even um, to be Wuxia. Those friendships and those bonds that they create are something that you'll find in all the authors and across all time in this genre, in my opinion. I love that. Uh, I mean, I even to... a really good point, though. I want, want to say yeah. this. Uh, Wuxia is not about fighting. So Jeremy is spot on. That if you're just talking about nonstop fighting, you're not talking about Wuxia. You're right. talking about something else. No, that's that's really well said. And it makes it even more apparent how much of an influencer Wuxia is because that same setup is what we have uh, at the beginning of Hamilton, where it's four guys that meet in a bar and somebody says the right thing and everybody's like yeah, we're friends now. Like, this is just what we're going to do. And we're going to move forward like that. So again, seeing how influential this genre is, uh, is, is beautiful. Uh, Juju, when it comes to uh, fighting in movies, um, do you do all of your own stunts? And yes. is it something that is important to have that martial arts training to do these stunts? Yes, um, it's important if you, uh, as an action actress, to do it all by yourself. And because mm-hmm. um, I don't, I don't like to have a stunt double because I want to present the way that I, you know, move and how the character, I, I, it's different when someone's doubling you. So uh, it's just like uh, Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, they did basically when they were young, they did all of their um, on-screen fighting themselves and they have their own particular style. Uh, and that's something that I want to my audience to see, my own style. Um, and it's important that's why I keep training. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and you can only do the best when you keep training and 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 inventing new uh, putting skills into your work yeah of course of course now we are running low on time so i apologize um i do want to take an opportunity to talk about immortal studios a little bit more um already immortal studios has one title out the adept um, which you guys had a very successful kickstarter for last summer um and the the first issue of it is available uh, if you go to wizardworldvault.com you guys can check that out um can you tell me a little bit more about the adept as a series and some of the uh, uh story concepts that you know kind of it came from from wuxia culture well this is a really big conversation something that gene and i can talk a lot about um i created the story for for the adept as an homage to Shaolin. Mm -hmm. Shaolin is really literally the birthplace of, of Eastern Kung Fu. It happened when Bodhidharma traveled from India into China. He was met by the locals. Uh, they practiced together. He proved They proved themselves to each other. And, and when he, his style of meditation and movement um, and bringing kind of something called Dhyana, which is a meditative consciousness into physical movement and it spawned the legend of Kung Fu. So Shaolin, all the stuff, karate and Taekwondo, a lot of mm -hmm. the Eastern Kung Fu and martial arts flowed from Shaolin. So Shaolin is kind of the big backstory of the adept of transcendent Kung Fu. Um, and we wanted to tell the story through the experience of Amy, who's a young girl who encounters this uh, legendary Shaolin master in her dreams. So it's a little bit of an homage to Kung Fu that I think a lot of people know about in the West. Um, and then this story concept was married with two excellent writers in, in, in Charlie Stickney and Tasha mm -hmm. Hua who breathed life and soul into these characters with the authentic uh, direction of, of a real Shaolin ad adept himself, Jin Ching, bringing yes. that authentic reality to it and then it just spawned it. So, we're still at very early stages of the story. Um, we're in fact crafting it. The, the first, we're finishing the first arc right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to see Amy become an adept to Shaolin Kung Fu in the first arc. And uh, there, there'll be a few surprises, but ultimately it's about bringing the reality of this transformational work back into the conversation. I love it. I love it. I, I'm not going to lie. As a comic book reader and creator myself, I adore this series. Um, so I'm telling y'all right now, you're going to want to jump all over this. Uh, not now, but right now, get this book. Uh, before we get out of here, and I'm going to start with Jeremy, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to uh, let everybody know where they can find you on social media. And uh, if, if possible, uh, what's something that you have coming up that we should be looking out for? Well, you can go to my website, which is jeremybuy.com, and there are links to all my social media, my YouTube channel, Twitter, and everything, as well as all of my works. Um, I do have an original novel that's coming out in about a month, but it's not really Wusha, so if I was going to recommend something, I would recommend this, which is, uh, can you see it? Yeah, Righteous Blood, Ruthless Blades. It's not, okay, there we go. There we go. Um, it's a tabletop role-playing game that just came out from Osprey Games. I think it just came out in North America. It's been out in Europe for a couple of weeks. And it is, uh, it's really a, a, a passion project of mine that I've been working on for about over two years now. And it's a, just a very traditional wuxia setting actually in ancient China. So it's not, not modern, uh, but it is like Dungeons and Dragons, sit down with your friends, paper and pen. And there's just a huge amount of work that went into that. So it is available anywhere that you buy books, whether Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, drive Through RPG, you can find it, check that out. It's, uh, it's, I think, to date, probably the most authentic in terms of being traditional, old school Wusha that you can get for role playing games. Nice, nice. Now, Juju, obviously, you are uh, filming something. You can't necessarily say what it is, which I appreciate. Um, but we have some more work coming from you. Yes? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I'm currently in Bangkok uh, shooting an action film. Um, I can't say what it is, but yeah, I have more stuff coming out. And if you want to check out my works, uh, check out uh, my work on Netflix, uh, mm -hmm. Assassins, Approaching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Sword of Destiny, and uh, recently have another film called Jiu Jitsu came out as well. Nice. Um, and for my social media, it's Juju Chan Sito for everything. Yeah. There we go. Somebody did ask if there was a second season of Wu Assassins on the horizon. Can you, do you know? I don't want to get you in trouble. Do you, do you know? <laughs> Stay tuned. Okay. All right. There we go. That's the, that's the best answer. That's the best answer. There we go. Gene, what about you, sir? 
Uh, well, I used to be the publisher of a print magazine, Kung Fu Tai Chi, mm -hmm. but unfortunately the uh, pandemic killed that. Um, but we still have KungFuMagazine.com, and I also do a lot of reporting for Den of Geek. Uh, nice. You can find me on Immortal. I mean, you can find me under social media under my, my name. Change. There we go. And last but certainly not least, Peter? Well, look, I've, I've, we've been talking a lot about Immortal Studios. We are a company that's devoted to rebooting the genre for the 21st century. We invite you to join us on our, web, on our website. It's immortal-studios.com. On it, you'll find our, our, our links. We're always running different campaigns. We're also soliciting people from the general public who love what we're doing to become a shareholder, a shareholder in our company. But I would say... Go to immortal-studios.com. You'll see everything about us. You'll learn about our team, our storyverse, and everything can start from there. I love it. Absolutely. Uh, once again, I'm Victor Dangerous, the hardest working man in comics. Uh, to all the fans that are watching live or watching later on a, a replay on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, make sure you sign up for some of the paid exclusives that are coming up. Uh, like I said, we've got uh, uh, Stargate. I think Atlantis is the is the key one. We've got Dolph Lundgren coming up. We've got so many amazing panels that are going to be dropping soon. It's going to be Awesome. Check those out, wizardworldvirtual.com. Um, and also, if you are ready to read the adept, and you should be, trust me, go to wizardworldvault.com. You want to get this book. It's beautiful. It's 48 pages. Okay, so it's huge. It is a thick read. It is a gorgeous read. Beautiful looking book. I can't co-sign it enough. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, thank you for uh, like really expressing your love of what Wuxia is and letting us all know that we really kind of share in this love already. Uh, I want to thank Wizard World for bringing us all together. Uh, one time before we get out of here, we'll say bye to the fans. Thank you guys so very much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Take care.